Hi, I'm Tom Reek, speaking today from Shunk at our headquarters in Morrisville, North Carolina. So thank you for joining us today at Automate Forward. Uh, if you're new to automation, you're probably seeing a lot of terminology and information coming at you all at once. So the purpose of this video is to just show a little bit about automation basics when it comes to robot handling and gripping. So we'll give you some background just to kind of help you along your way as you begin to explore automation. Just to, to begin with, um, the first concept here is uh, something called OD gripping. So that applies as gripping on the outer edges of a workpiece. So this is illustrated here using a two-jaw gripper on a robot gripping on the, the outer edges of the, the surfaces of the part. So conversely to that, another uh, concept would be ID gripping. So here there's a different gripper that has two jaws that are moving in parallel, but instead of expanding inward around a workpiece, the gripper is expanding outward, and the jaws of the gripper are moving inside of a, of a groove within the workpiece, and with that outward expansion are holding it and securing it while the robot transfers it and moves it throughout the process. So another way that uh, we can classify gripping is something called a capture grip. So thinking about, think about holding a part with your hands and how you envelop your fingers around the part to make sure it's secure, that it's not going anywhere. So this is what's happening here, but also notice uh, with this part, this is a heavy part, an engine block, and we're having to secure it so that it doesn't fall, but it's also important to notice that the guidance on the gripper is strong so that this part doesn't want to bend and uh, put a moment that would uh, damage the gripper or cause it to twist out of the gripper. So it's important that we hold this part in a very stable way so that during the operation or during the process of handling it with a robot that it's secure um, along the way and not, uh, not becoming dislodged or moving. So another concept here is within gripping is we're kind of doing a, a, a capture grip holding a camshaft, a crankshaft. And what's happening here that's different is we have outriggers that are built into the uh, gripper end effector. So we're gripping a part, holding it with, with friction and capturing it, but also having auxiliary uh, outriggers that are stabilizing the workpiece to keep it from uh, wanting to wobble as the robot moves. So one thing that uh, engineers ask us all the time when they look at grippers for the robots is they'll say, well, how much force do I need or how much workpiece can a gripper safely handle? And the answer is often that it depends. So here we have three different situations. The first situation on the left is we're doing a friction grip where we're just doing an ID, or in this case it's an OD grip, where we're holding the part purely with friction. In the middle, we're doing a capture grip where the fingers are enveloping the part, where now it's really up to the jaw guidance to know how much workpiece we can handle. But in this middle position, we can handle far more weight um, than we were doing solely with friction. And then the right side, here we have a combination where we're uh, partially enveloping the part, uh, but also holding it in place with friction. So oftentimes it depends. And please look for other videos where we go into more detail that will be able to help you understand more fully the differences between these three cases. So we're looking at um, gripper force for maximum payloads. We also have to think about gripping forces for light parts. Oftentimes with fragile work pieces, it's important that we have just enough grip force to be able to hold the part, but we don't want so much grip force that we're gonna crush the part. So it's important that sometimes when you're um, handling very lightweight parts that the gripper is controllable to where we can get the grip force down to the, uh, just a few newtons so that we can hold the work piece comfortably. So another concept um, with gripping and robots are uh, dual end effectors, um, sometimes even end effectors that have three or more grippers. Here's an end effector where there's a robot handling two parts is loading parts in and out of a process. So here, if you look at the, um, the turbos, um, we're ha picking up one uh, workpiece and getting ready with the opposite gripper 
to load the second work piece. So that way the robot only has to take one trip in and out of the process. You don't have to take, um, to come down and make a separate trip uh, for picking the finished part and then replacing it with a new part. So another concept which is very important when you're gripping, especially multiple work pieces at once, here we have valves that are being inserted into a single engine block. And we have one robot doing the insertion and we're inserting three valves into the same block all at once. So you can imagine what would happen if we had three rigid grippers. What could happen is that one valve lines up perfectly and one of the other two valves might jam. So here what's happening is behind each gripper, there's its own independent compliance device that allows each of those grippers to individually assist each of those valves from going in smoothly. So compliance devices can often be a very important part of gripping when you're doing assembly tasks um, using a robot, especially when you're dealing with loading and unloading more than one part at a time. Another application showing a compliance device is here where we're simulating loading a part onto into like a three-jaw chuck. So here we have a gripper that has a lot of gripping force, loading it onto a fixture. And when you do that handoff between the fixturing and the automated gripping, we want to make sure that, um, that we're not having both components playing tug of war with each other and that we're doing that handoff very smoothly. So we have a compliance unit back behind that gripper making that successful. So moving on from compliance devices, talk about regripping. So think about uh, when you're doing a machining operation, you load your, your blank into the machine and you do your first op. And what happens, you have to be able to get to the opposite side of the workpiece to do your, your finishing operations from the other end. So what um, is shown here is very common where the robot would remove the workpiece after the first operation and it would set it into a regrip stand. So this is what's being illustrated here. Here we have a, a gripper with a rotary behind the gripper. So when the robot loads it into the regrip stand, it'll flip the part around. The robot can regrab it from the opposite side, load it into the, uh, to the second dairy machining process, and off you go, you can finish your workpiece. So oftentimes with workpieces, you might have a lot of variance in sizes. Say you're machining a part and you have a range of different size parts that, uh, that you want to be able to handle uh, comfortably without making complex changes in the tooling. So here what we're showing you is that uh, there's a large three-jaw, long-stroke three-jaw gripper that's designed for handling a large range of diameter parts. Aside from that, the top tooling on the jaws is designed to be quick change and it's also designed to be adjustable. So when you have those outlier work pieces that you can change over your tooling or adjust your tooling to be able to accommodate them quickly. And then for some cases, lastly here, we're showing a tool change stand. So here we have two different grippers that would be set up for two entirely different work pieces. So here what would happen is when you pick up your first work piece, finish your, your process successfully, and um, when you go to your second work piece, which is different, the robot can dock the end of arm tool, set it aside, grab a totally different end of arm tool, and you're up and running. So this is being illustrated here by what we call a tool changer stand, where we're storing unused tools and fetching um, new tools using the robot and the quick change. So I hope it helps you get you some of the basic terminology down for, for gripping, which is a common task used in robot handling. And uh, we hope you also stick around to watch some of our other educational videos. And at Shunk, we're always uh, looking forward to speaking with you and hope we can help you on an upcoming project. Thank you.